Hello, today we're looking at the CR100 3D printer from Creality. This is Creality's smallest form factor printer, very much aimed at children, and is recommended for ages 10 and up, with what can be described as a very unique design based around a truck. The printable area for this printer is 100 by 100 by 80 millimeters, or 4 by 4 by 3 inches for our American cousins. And the printer uses the standard silicon sleeved Mark 10 0.4mm brass nozzled hot end fitted with a single cooling fan for the hot end and part cooling, along with their injection molded plastic extruder that can be found on many Creality printers. The printer runs 1.75mm filament, and inside the box you'll find the CR100 itself, a remote control, a power cable, a spare build plate, two sheets of what I believe is captain tape, but we'll add an annotation if Creality get back to me regarding the material, a bag with your SD card, wrench, an acupuncture needle for clearing blockages, the mountable spool holder, a roll of 1.75mm PLA, and a scraper for removing parts from the bed. So let's fire up the printer straight out of the box and try one of the test prints. For this one, I picked the test G-code called Test Normal Dog. And we seem to have a small issue, so I opened up the G-code file in Creality's Cure Powered Slicing Software, and here we can see the problem. The file was sliced for a printer with a much larger build area. So I checked the SD card for some SDL files, and chose the Squirrel Pawn from the included Squirrel Chess set. Sliced this with the default settings, and tried again. This time success. We started printing out of the box, with no setup other than loading in the filament. Though at this point it looked to me like the bed might be a little too far away from the nozzle, leading to adhesion issues, partly due to the raft tending to have very little filament in contact with the bed itself on smaller prints. And indeed this was the problem, but with a small adjustment to the ZN stop dial, found underneath the spool holder, I was able to lower the nozzle and try again. Take three. And third time lucky. This print turned out really nice. But it's a highly textured model, so it's hard to see any real issues with the extrusion. Before throwing anything more taxing at the printer, I wanted to check the full 80mm build height, so I ran a quick VARS mode print, with impressive results both in print time and quality. Next I printed the other G-code on the SD card, the Test CR100 Lion. I guess I should have started with that one considering it has the right printer name in the title. And again, great results out of the box with no changes to the default profile. With one glaring exception, the raft. The settings for the raft are just plain bad. The model on all my prints were fully fused to the raft and was impossible to cleanly remove. So I thought I would try a more challenging print without a raft, 
Cue the obligatory Benchy print. For this print I use the default Benchy settings, slowing down the print from 80mm a second to 50mm a second. The print had no problem adhering to the faux build tack without the raft, with just some small deformation on the first few layers due to the Z offset being set to squish the first layers of the raft into the bed. My fault, not the printers. And the results were surprisingly impressive. I came into this review with a certain level of scepticism, just due to the size and price and styling of the printer, but it seemed to be handling everything I was throwing at it with very little tweaking. The Benchy was able to highlight a few issues with the default settings of the printer, mainly the over extrusion due to the 100% flow rate and a rather aggressive retraction setting of 6mm at 80mm a second. And I can understand why they would do this, to avoid stringing with the high print speeds and the lack of a separate cooling fan but certainly some room for tuning this printer to get better printing results. But still, a very respectable Benchy regardless. Next I wanted to test the adhesion of the bed with some other materials, so I ran a quick phase mode print of the rocket, printing in PETG at 225 degrees C, and despite the small footprint and lack of heated bed, another success for the CR100. And to make use of the second print bed included in the box, I tried a larger print in PETG just using blue painter's tape. The only issue was the first few layers highlighted the slope in the bed, something there's no way to adjust for with the stock build of this printer. Though the print completed with no other issues. It was only when using the full bed that I got the smallest amount of lifting on blue painter's tape, something I did not get with the build tech. And here we can also see the higher levels of stringing you would expect from PETG. Next I wanted to see how it would cope with lots of small islands of support material, so I picked a model, heavily reliant on supports, and sliced using a quick simplify 3D profile, but still using the stock settings for everything other than support generation, and raising the temp a little as I was testing eSun's PLA Plus filament. Again, no issue with the small supports adhering, and very little stringing. After removing the supports and some very minimal clear up, Again, we saw some really good results. This filament also shows up really well on camera, and you can really see the retraction issues I mentioned earlier. Again, not terrible, and with some minor settings in the slicer, this printer will be able to turn out some truly impressive prints. Now it's time to open up the printer and have a look at the electronics. The main board is a custom spun PCB marked as the Creality 3D 1.0.4. And surprisingly it's running an STM32 ARM microcontroller. This is a 32-bit 72MHz controller with a large 512K programmable space. Thanks to the team at STM32 Duino, we're going to be seeing a lot more 32-bit boards compatible with the Arduino IDE and by extension, the various 3D printer firmwares. But there is slightly something amusing about Creality's smallest and cheapest printer, aimed at children, also being their most powerful when it comes to processing power. Even the latest V1.14 upgrade board for the Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, Ender 5, CR10, CR10 Mini, is still using the 8-bit Atmel architecture. So this could be a sign of things to come with Creality and their new 3D printers moving to 32-bit, with the upcoming release of Marlin 2. On the topic of firmware, I tried to see what version of Marlin the CR100 was running, so I used the M115 command in terminal, but all the firmware information had been stripped out and replaced with Creality branding. 
Next, as this printer was aimed at children, I wanted to test the safety features, so I disconnected the heater cartridge and replaced it with a multimeter to simulate a thermistor coming loose and to test the thermal runaway protection. After a few seconds, the firmware should detect that the heat is not going up and shut down the heating process. Unfortunately, this did not happen and I ran the test for over five minutes. This is a huge safety issue in my opinion, but unfortunately one you'll find on all but the recently upgraded models of the Creality printers. There is little excuse to admit this feature considering they have more than enough programmable space in the microcontroller to include it, and this is by far the largest flaw in the printer. I sincerely hope they address this issue and roll out a patch. Something that could be done simply and easily by just updating the hardware with a bin file that could be placed onto a blank SD card and booting the printer to update it. Please do this Creality. Right now it's really hard to recommend this printer for institutions like schools, where a cheap, fast, low maintenance 3D printer to help with STEM education would be ideal. But without constant monitoring, it's just not safe with this current firmware build. So that brings me to the conclusion of the small but mighty 3D printer. It has a lot of pros and one large con, and a couple of smaller ones. I'm not a fan of the extruder mechanism, it's a bit of a filament stripper, and I feel children will have trouble loading filament. It would have been nice to see a clip or geared system to make this easier, or maybe even the addition of a couple of extra buttons on the control panel to actually help with feeding the filament. The spring on the Z offset could be stronger, as being lightweight, the vibrations would take the bed out of level after long prints, but it is hard to find many other flaws with the CR100. I was unsure about the popularity of small form factor printers, but a quick search on Banggood I found 22 FDM printers clearly showing there is a market out there for sub 150mm cubed printers. I like the simplicity of the 3 button control, but wish there was just another one or two to raise the Z axis to help with loading filament. I like what they're calling intelligent levelling, basically some springs on the X carriage to stop the nozzle from diving into the bed. But I worry that people may misconstrue the use of the word intelligent to think that it has auto bed levelling. I'm also a fan of the remote control, something I thought would be a gimmick, but on reflection, I found a useful tool. Not only is repeatedly pressing the home button from across the room fun for a full grown man, but it also lets young children get involved in operating the printer from a safe distance, and reinforces the idea that little fingers should be kept away from the printer during heat up and the prints. So in conclusion, would I buy one for a child, or even myself? For a child, if they update the firmware and include thermal runaway protection, Yes, without a doubt. The price is low for the quality and the ease of use. The build plate is a totally usable size for fun things like toys or custom cookie cutters. For myself, I would have totally dismissed the printer based on its looks, and I would have missed out a lot on an excellent printing experience. I do worry that people will be turned off based on the design of the truck enclosure, but maybe just as many people with a fondness for a certain 18-wheeler transformer truck from the 1980s cartoon will pick one up and be pleasantly surprised by the quality of this printer. If you're interested in seeing a video where I fine tune the slicer settings and look at some possible modifications, please comment below and hit the subscribe button. Thank you for taking the time to watch the video review, and if you're interested in picking one up for yourself, there's discount codes below. Once again, thank you.